again uh, since you guys have come on. Let's see, uh, that'll be two weeks ago tomorrow that you guys joined. Uh, you've seen just one after another after another after another of uh, winning trades. It's oh, yeah. been a uh, good run. Good run for us. Good time to join. Uh, they made a good decision. Right here. Yep. And, uh, you know, Greg, I, I put out the alert just a bit ago mm -hmm. to uh, short that GM. Yeah. And it, I think I got that at 56. Yeah. And already paying, like, before the market. And it was 12 <laughs> minutes in. Boom. Already paying. So I know. I'm up, like, 10% on the options that I alerted for that as well. Oh, that's right. I forgot you yeah. did. That was a sweet one because, yeah, yeah you're right. You definitely did the right thing by telling yep. everybody, hey, watch this one because of the close expiration. Yep. But you know what? As stressed out as this thing has been on the upside, it's just ready for a little bit of a, a, little bit of a reversal, temporary though it yep. may be. Yep. Temporary, more likely that it will be. Exactly. That's what happens. Nothing exactly. moves in a straight line forever. Something good to remember. So two weeks ago, what was the last time we did our Traders Town Hall? I'm sure you guys all remember that we were going over individual money mistakes and I've done some thinking on that. I know nobody likes a thinking uh, general, but that's what I am. And I've done some thinking on that in the last couple of weeks and kind of expanded uh, the, the topic a bit, the discussion. Things come up. I, I want you to spend some time um, in the next week. So we talked about two weeks ago, thinking about it, your, your homework assignment. And you know some of you brought to light what your thoughts were about this last week or two weeks ago. Uh, you posted that in the uh, in the message section, which is great. Uh, others were just kind of keeping it closer to the vest, and we understand that. However, I'll tell you this: that if you want to learn, get better, improve, uh, transparency, uh, willingness to share and interact, that's only only going to help you. Remember that these things are going to help you. They are not here. Uh, no one is here to say, "Hey, look at that idiot!" You know, he he yeah, spent no. a bunch of money on um, on a cruise last week when he really. No, no, no. No one's no. going to be doing that here. This isn't Reddit. Yeah. Okay? This isn't Reddit. We're not... Uh, no one's running for office here, as far as I know. Yeah. We're just here yeah. to uh, to help each other out. Yeah. And so I'll start off with a quick story. Uh, and then, of course, you guys, as we're going through this, as we're discussing this, as we're talking about this, get your questions ready. Uh, we usually answer them at the end. Uh, so I'll tell you a quick story. I was thinking about transportation recently, actually a lot but even earlier today i'll show a chart on this here let me throw this up and it always takes a second for the chart to load give it a second and you should be seeing that now to expand it if you wish to just click on it and it'll blow up for you hopefully it won't be blowing up your computer so i've got the transportation index which is the very first index ever invented the very first stock market index ever invented in the history of well mankind um, it was the early 1890s, Charles Dow and Benefis. There were 18 railroad companies that were in this index today. Um, there are much, there were, there are far fewer railroad companies. There are, um, I think there are 24 stocks in the transport index. The few railroads are still there. Uh, airline companies, trucking companies, shipping like FedEx, uh, UPS. That's what makes it up today. Uh, so invented in the early 1890s, been around obviously ever since. It's curious that the markets with um, a, not a, you know what, this, this move started off so hot earlier today, didn't it, Greg? Oh, yeah. Reversal. Started off hot, ended up cool. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and not, crap. Not cool in the Fonzie sense. <laughs> cool in the what happened sense, right? Um, yeah. It just kind of cooled off as, uh, as the afternoon wore on. But still, an up day. NASDAQ up 1%. S&P up three quarters of a percent. And the transport index posting a, a minor loss. That's yeah. kind of curious. But as so I was thinking about transportation, I have a couple of good friends of mine that own trucking companies. They own anywhere from uh, three to uh, twenty uh, trucks, and you know they have drivers driving uh, these vehicles around. And I talked to them about the expense of um, their running their business. And we have two cars in our house as well. That's because there are two of us. And it's crazy, especially for me. This is one of the things that kind of hit me about it recently. I, I'm not into cars in terms of how I choose to spend uh, that kind of money, you know, like excess money, uh, fun money. And this is all part of uh, your own individual personal finance journey. 
I just th there's other things that I would rather spend my money on. I don't I don't want to buy. I don't need to have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar car when a forty thousand dollar car works. I just need something functional. I yeah. you, you're not gonna believe this, but I put only six miles a month on my car. Okay? Six miles That's a it. month. Six hundred miles a month. Oh, That's all I drive. Wow. I don't even own a car. Six hundred because. That's impressive. See, Greg doesn't even own a car, so he puts less on his car than I do on mine. Yeah. All right. A lot less because this time of year, well, really from uh, April through the end of November, uh, I take my bicycle everywhere. It's a choice. I love it. It's the way I want to live. The town I live in is set up for that. The place I live in is set up for that. Uh, so I don't just, I just don't need a car very much. So I'm driving this car 600 miles a month. But what goes on? Well, a couple weeks ago, I had to get the oil changed. And that was, um, you know, whatever, 65 or 70 bucks. Okay. A year and a half ago, I had to get new tires on it. That was, I don't know, 700 bucks. Uh, the car has 59,000 miles on it, which means it's got some life left, but it, it won't last forever. Eventually, things start to wear out. And what are those expenses, right? There are hundreds or thousands of dollars. This is transportation, okay? I only drive a car 600 miles a month. So I'm not into cars. That's just not my thing. But if I was, here's the money mistake. For someone like me that only drives 600 miles a month, spends a lot of time on a bicycle, why would I spend eighty, a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a car? Hmm. That's idiotic. Yeah. Okay. It's all about your money. It doesn't make any kind of sense. Because what do I need a car for? I need a car for those six hundred miles a month, hmm. and that's kind of uh, the end of it. So the money mistake people make is transportation. Huge, huge mistake, especially younger people. Now I'm in a different generation. I get it. I've got three sons. Uh, one's a little bit younger than Greg. The other two are uh, 16, well, 15 and 21. I and might so as well be your son, Romulus. You got four. I got, got four. four there sons. you go. So one, one of my, two of my four don't even have a car. <laughs> and the other two who have cars, look, when I was, uh, I grew up in a state where um, you had to be 17 to get a license. And I'm telling you, the second the motor vehicle office opened, when everybody turned 17, it was, you know, 8.30 or 9 in the morning. We were always at the office, first people in line, ready to get our license and get in our cars and go. Both of my sons that have their license, they have cars now, but they waited months to get their license because they didn't care. Yeah. It just wasn't. And I'm hearing that. I noticed that with my yeah. younger brother. He's not eager to get his license and he's about to be no. 17. The very first day, like I turned 16, I went to go take the test. Maybe like the, the next but day. It's different whatever. today, right? People yeah. just don't, they don't care as much about these types of things as getting a license, running out there and doing that kind of thing. So if that's you, then definitely do not spend a lot of money. Oh, but it's fancy. And so let's say, uh, you know, it, it attracts the opposite sex, you know, whatever <laughs> that is, girl or boy, right? It attracts the opposite the sex or I, I, I want to show up for my friends or yeah. check all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. You want to, you want to get and stay rich. You got to check your ego on these kinds of things mm -hmm. until you get at least ten million in the bank. Yeah. You got the fu money, and then you can do whatever you want. That's exactly. You know, use that as the yardstick. I, that's why I haven't bought a car. It's like, yeah, I could go spend ten, twenty grand on a car today. I'm gonna wait. Right. I'm waiting for the oh, really I good I know, deals. I know for a, I know for a fact that Greg can go out and he can spend. He yeah. could buy that car up to twenty thousand or even a little more for yeah. cash. But no. Okay. I'm not uh, we've been that. working together long enough that I know what's going on in there. He can. But look at him. He's yeah. uh, screw it. Why? He doesn't need it. I don't need it. He and his fiance sure have got a situation. Yeah. Uh, they've got a, an arrangement that works for both of them, yeah. and he's able to put that money to better use. So that's a, a huge, huge individual money mistake is transportation, vehicle, and car. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just completely It's expensive. Nuts Repairs, so. gas, mileage, wear and yeah. tear, insurance, tickets that right. you might get. You know. <laughs> yeah. Crashes. So how, how does that change? How do the parameters on that decision change from one person to another where it does make sense to spend more money on a car? Yeah. Perfect example, a real estate agent that is a baller that has a good business. Yeah. That person needs a nice yeah. car. Not only do to, you do a lot of driving around, but your clients are getting into your vehicle quite often. You're, sh you're taking them to homes. You're showing them around. You have to have a nice car that works well, that doesn't give you any problems, and that shows off well to your customers. You need to spend money on that piece of equipment because it's work. It's going to help you make money. Yeah. Okay? It's going to help you make money. Exactly. And that's the parameter for all of this. Mm -hmm. If you look at a car, I mean, I just need to get 
my my work pl- my workplace is nine miles away. I need to get there back, and a couple things are running around, uh, you know, for the family and help my mom out. Yeah, I, I don't need an expensive fancy car, okay. But if I'm a real estate, <clears throat> pardon me, if I'm a real estate agent that's making a living, or my friends that run trucking companies, they need to invest in the proper equipment because it's making them money. You get it? It's making them money. Brandon right? doesn't. So own Brandon a car. talks a lot. He's got millions. Brandon doesn't own a car. And this goes back to the Monopoly example. Those that win in Monopoly, I win every time in Monopoly, but it's because I constantly reinvest and put the hotels on there. And then that way I'm constantly reinvesting. I only spend money on things that'll give me a good return on investment. And then once you're filthy rich, sure, buy whatever you want. (laughs) Buy whatever you want. Right. Like I said, 10 million is the yardstick. Yeah. So Brandon lives in a place where he does not need a car. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to have to deal with all the other stuff that goes into it. I didn't even yeah. think about you, know, you have monthly car. insurance costs yeah. to insure. You know what it costs to insure a car? I don't even live in a high a high cost insurance state. But California, New Jersey, these types of states where the car insurance is super expensive, it's it's insane. Okay? The people the money yeah. people spend on vehicles is absolutely nuts and people just kind of fall into uh, oh, the, everybody the marketing. else does it. That's what I hear. There you go. All, everybody all else my, does all, it. A lot of my friends are like, I... oh, you don't have a car yet, Greg? It's like, well, I, I got a house instead a house. at a 2.9% interest rate. I'm going to go with that. Right. And because he's got such a low interest rate and he's the type of person that you know knows how to fix stuff, you get a good uh, good value on that. So um, homes, homes is another one, uh, although not the same as a car because it kind of holds its value. Homes is not so much a big mo- individual money mistake. As it is, there's just a lot of myths and fallacy and false uh, false thinking when it comes to owning a home. Okay, okay? let's hear them. What, what uh, Grant mind? Cardone has talked about this quite a bit. Brandon's talked about this. I talk about it a lot too. Yeah. You have a lot of expenses that go into your house that you don't think about. Okay. I mean, the other day uh, it was the you know it's the middle of the summer around here. You got the bugs coming. So the by the way, right now I rent my house. Okay. okay? The place, the place paid, they had the exterminator out. I'm like, you know, I wouldn't even even thought about that as a little extra expense. I just, it would have, it just wouldn't have occurred to me. Yeah. They just take care of it for you. All the extra side yeah. expenses. And you're a little Garage bit more door nimble broke. too. Like if there's any like. Gar- yo, that, that, I'll get to that too. Yeah. Garage door broke a month ago. I didn't have to pay for it. Okay. When you own a home and you say, hey, my in the past 200 plus years, Residential real estate in the United States has advanced an average of 3.1% per year. So if you say, hey, Ron, my home is $100,000, in a year from now, it should be worth one hundred and three, according to the previous 200 years of, um, of average. Yeah. In the past 12 months, home values are, depending on where you live, San Francisco, they're still down. In my town, they're about flat. Some places are a little bit higher, but let's just call it flat to slightly down over the past 12 months. Because they went up a lot in 21 and part of 22 because of COVID. You know, real estate values did go up more than the average during that time. So they're kind of balancing out in here. But you have to keep in mind, you're paying property taxes. Mm-hmm. You're paying for the landscaping. You're paying to fix the water heater. You're paying to fix the roof. You're paying to fix the garage. You're paying to have it external. You're paying for all these things all the time. And what are you getting back? Right? What are you getting back from this? And if you buy, if you buy a home with a mortgage which most people do, and the interest rates are a lot higher than 2.9% today. I have news for you. They're six yeah. and a half, seven, seven and a half percent today. I would not be. You are not making money on the house. Yeah. Okay. You're not making, and again, it's not like a car. It doesn't pr- depreciate like that. It, it kind of can hold its value, but your money's not working for you. Yeah. So it's not so much a, a financial mistake as it is people fall into the myth that, oh, I really need to buy a house. You can. It's a it's a decent idea. It's not a great idea though. I think it comes really down to the value. Can you get a good deal? You don't want to overpay you for a house. You're a sucker if you pay 50, 100k, 200k over than what the actual house is worth. So you've got to be a good judge of value. Like th- that's what at least what I did with my house. I got a really good deal on it. It's up quite a bit and I still think it's pretty good, but if there are any other place or any other state or area, no way. So it's just like a stock. You you got to decide if is it overvalued, undervalued. Right. Can I tolerate the risk, 
What are the total expenses? If you can accept all that, sure. But most of the time, it's not the best. Wait for the yeah, good deals. Wait. Wait for you'll the you'll find deals. we haven't seen that in a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about a nationwide mm -hmm. general real estate pullback yeah. in quite some time where you can get values. You can find them in your neighborhoods. It, it's very localized right now. Greg found a place a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. There's no deals. As a matter of fact, my entire town is overpriced yeah. by every and all metrics. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to buy. But you can keep you keep your eyes open and make a smart choice in that respect. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just like with the car. Think about your own situation. Too many people in life when it comes to personal finances just go with the flow. They were told to do these things. It's what everybody else does. And it's not the real secret and trick to long term value creation, wealth creation, and holding on to it. Yeah. Okay? yeah. It's not like that. So cars uh, residents, you know, these are things that are big uh, areas and things to think about. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I see a lot of people, and by the way, if you're not going to own a home, so I don't own my house, okay? We have a couple of cars, they're, uh, they're paid for, but even as they're paid for, I hate the idea of having to take it to a shop for any reason and putting any money into it. Yeah. It just, it pisses me off, mm -hmm. okay? So the money that I don't put into my house because I don't own it, I put it into my stock investing. Yeah. Okay. I put it into my business. That's what I do with my money. So I'm getting a, a, yeah. a I'm obviously getting a much higher rate of return. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fantastic. But You're that's what you want. If you don't own a house or you don't do these things, what else do you do with your money? Yeah. Do something that helps you make money. Yes. Exactly. Trading, investing, in, you know, in the stock market, the futures market, the bond market, the commodities market. That's what Greg and I do. That's what we help people do all the time. Matter of fact. Uh, we'll, we'll get more into that in a minute. Yeah. But if you want to do do that, great. Join the Legion. You want to do something else. You want to buy homes to rent out to other people because you're mechanically inclined. You know how to fix a home. You know about uh, painting. You know about carpet. You know how to buy Electrical. kitchen appliances uh, at the right price and get them installed. You have people who can help you do these things. Do that. Get your money working for you. That's the point. Put your money into something that can help make you money. Brandon talks a lot about uh, the, on the personal uh, training, the fitness training side of the business, where if you are a personal trainer uh, doing online tra fitness training, you want to go to places where there are expensive gyms, join an expensive gym, yeah. dress the part, be the part. Why? That's how you can attract clients. To. That's worth your money mm -hmm. to put yourself into an expensive gym, like a lifetime, for example, buying the right outfit, looking the part, keeping yourself you know, groomed and, and tight, which is more expensive than not doing it. Why? Because it can help you make money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It can help you make money. I mean, I see people doing these things where the, the farthest thing from their profession, they just do it because it's their ego. And I think, oh. man, are you worth 10 million? Then why are you doing that? Mm. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. Okay. So clothing, those that same thing with the real estate agent and the car concept, mm. you spend your, your extra money on those extra nicer things. Why? Because it can help you make money. Otherwise, yeah. Functional, good, clean, uh, operational stuff. Now, to back up a second, all along those same lines, if you are using those types of things to help you make money, then not only does it, should it look good, it should be quality and last. Yeah. Spend the extra money. Now, this is a place, again, just like with the real estate and the car, when and how and why would the conditions reverse where it's worth it for you to spend that extra money, your personal situation? And then you've got to think about, okay, I'm making money from my, from my appearance in a way. Years and years ago, I used to do a lot of work on, uh, on television news. So I'd go on the financial news networks such as CNN, CNBC, mm -hmm. Fox uh, out of New York, Bloomberg, all these uh, the big uh, TV networks out of New York. I used to go there on a Monday morning and stay the whole week and then fly home on Friday and I'd hit all the networks uh, every day for five straight days. Well, guess what? How I looked was important, right? So I used oh, to yeah. spend two to three thousand dollars on a suit. You mean, Robbie, so you can show up in a tank top? <laughs> not quite like that yeah, one. Exactly. That's that's not quite like that one. That's awesome, though. You got a suit and everything. But it, why? Yeah. Why did it make sense for me to do that? Because yeah, you're a professional. It helped me make money. Mm -hmm. Okay, it helped me make money. But now I'm not doing those types of television appearances. Now my clothes are. Really high quality clothing, far fewer of them, and no no super expensive suits.
Okay, don't need the stuff. Why would I spend money on that stuff when it doesn't help me make money? Yeah, or one of the, just like the, one really good suit, and then boom, you got it for life. Like right, you gotta, right, yeah, exactly. Like a tuxedo. One, one of the the one. one of the primary uh, parameters that I use to make a decision like that is: does it help me make money or not? Okay. Yeah. Does it help me make money or does it not? And if it doesn't help me make money, why am I about to spend this particular money on whatever it is? So that's a different concept too. I'll give you another example. My wife and I own a, a very rare breed of dog. Like it's the second rarest dog breed on the planet. Why do I have this? I just said I have a wife, right? So now you know why I have the dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And she was really expensive. Okay. I, as a matter of fact, I never heard of a dog costing this much money. But you know what? That's a case where it's not, she doesn't help us make money. I mean, I guess we could put her, put her on Instagram and yeah. believe me, she'd, yeah, she'd probably rack up more views <laughs> um, than Elon Musk in no time. But that's not what she's here for. She's here for my wife. She's here to give her joy, comfort, fun, entertainment, uh, a, a companion, all those other great things that come with uh, being a dog owner. That's why she's here. So it's worth it to spend the money on that. That's what we want. And we're dog people. We love, we live in a town where people are, uh, it's a big dog type of a town. We bring her everywhere all the time. We bring her on vacation. We bring her to the beach all the time. That's what we do. So that was worth it for us to spend that money on that type of a situation because it's important to us. It doesn't help us make money, but it's important to us for a lot of other reasons. But I didn't just stumble into that. I didn't just have it whack me in the head and say, here's you know the thousands to buy this dog and off we go. I thought about it. Okay. What's important to me? What are my values and beliefs? What do I support? How do I want to spend? I'm in my 50s right now. Super good health, fortunately, and blessed for that. But how do I want to spend the next 40 or 50 years of my life? Hmm. What do I want to do? What do I want to get out of it? What are the things that I want to support? Okay. And the things that I want to support? Okay, another example. Uh, I told you guys this about a month and a half ago. I got a motorcycle license. Yeah. I took these... I took these lessons. It was three days um, of intense classroom and uh, and on the on the field work. Really awesome stuff, by the way. And I've I've been able to go out. I have friends who own bikes. I've been able to borrow those uh, my friends' bikes for an afternoon and cruise around. But you know, I have no interest in buying my own bike. None. And hey, so I'm not friends. going to. I'm not going to spend twenty thousand dollars on a motorcycle that'll sit in my garage or sit uh, sit still for you know forty five out of the fifty two weeks a year. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Okay? I'll borrow one or I'll rent one a few times a summer to go out and enjoy the fun. I learned a lesson a while ago, rent your fun. Okay, <laughs> Another big money mistake that yeah. people make. Yeah. People, the, the, two, the two best days of a boat owner's life, the day they buy the boat, the day they sell the boat. Yep, <laughs> that's a good one. I was just about to say, Ramius, I live on a lake, and I was like, oh, I could buy a boat. Or I could just rent one or just like hang out with yep. a friend that has a boat and yep. it saves a lot of money and boom, it makes the experience more valuable too. And it's a little bit more rare. Like sure. If you owned a boat, you could go out every day, but every day. it would lose its value. If you went every day, it's more fun yeah. every once in a while. And at, at any time, a couple times a summer, you know, Greg lives in a very cold weather climate. I mean, what are we talking about here? Two months maybe three months out of the year that he could yep. possibly use a boat that he would buy. Good point. Good point. Yeah. It's too cold otherwise. Yeah. I mean, that guy, he sees snow every September, <laughs> right? Yep. It's ridiculous. Negative But he can rent one. 50. Yeah. He can rent one anytime he wants. A couple times a summer, go rent a boat. My, my Have dad some fun. owns like a little like $4,000 boat. It gets the job done. It's fun. It can gets the on. job done. Yeah. Okay. So you got to think, okay, but what if... I live on or near the water, and I'm a huge water type of a person. I like to fish, yeah. water ski, uh, cruise around like people live in the Carolinas, especially North Carolina. They use the boats to get around. You know, go go to the supermarket, go out to eat, and that's how. If that's a part of your life like that, then you buy the boat and you buy the good one and you spend the money. You see the difference? 
Yeah. And you can tolerate that. Like it's not a huge portion yeah. of your wealth. If you've got a hundred thousand dollars to your name, you better not be spending forty thousand dollars on a boat. That's ridiculous. No, we'll You'd hunt you down and beat you. Million, you know, before you do that. Yeah. Because te it's temper the cost of the boat. So if it's a hundred thousand dollar boat, you're gonna spend ten percent of that a year just maintaining and operating it. So ten yeah. grand a year. All right. Jeff Bezos, they said he spent thirty million dollars. Um, or it'll, it'll cost him $30 million a year to run his boat. Yeah, it's a $300 million boat, okay? Yep. Or whatever the number is. You know, it, it doesn't matter to him. He's, that's lunch money, right? But the yeah. point is that it's you got to think about these types of things. Yeah, it's and it's, it, it's, getting, it's getting trapped with these money mistakes, mm -hmm. making these money mistakes that inhibit people from growing and maintaining a massive amount of wealth. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I, I look at this, and I've watched this over the many years. I've watched observed how I've acted and I've observed how others around me have acted and as others around me that are not as wealthy as me that are not as doing as well financially that are my age similar circumstances but they should be yeah they should be they've had you know similar income levels but they not because they spend money you know they say the um like doctors are notorious for spending way oh, more than they should I bet. two country club memberships second home a boat, <laughs> and then by the time they're 40, they get the divorce, and the, the ex-wife takes half their money. Yep. Okay? Rip. Divorce, divorce rate in the medical profession, doctors, is like triple the uh, the national average or something. Okay? Because they're working so, all the time. Get half. Yeah, they're working and whatever it is. But point is that, that that's ridiculous. Yeah. They just give all this money. They, they have high incomes, mm -hmm. and so they get enticed and seduced by that high income. But by the time they're 40 or 45, they should be worth $10 million. They're not. Yep. It's the hedonic treadmill. Um, yeah, they spend what, too much. What are your thoughts on eating out, Romulus? Because it's starting to become great a lot one. more expensive lately. Oh, I'm noticing great like, choice. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on great, that? Great, <laughs> great topic. Uh, everybody likes to sit down yeah. somewhere and have someone serve you, right? I mean, it's just, <laughs> just <You cook> good. <laughs> of course we do. Yeah. It's, it's life, human nature. First of all, I don't go out to eat that much because I never know what's in the food. Okay. especially yeah, you now that Butter. for those centurions that are, were on our uh, call this morning when we were live futures trading i, I talked about the the six That's week uh, eating plan that i'm on right now and there's no way i can go out to eat on this thing because there's nothing i can eat at a restaurant they just don't have anything um, but you will spend far less money making your own food and eating far better so if you eat better what does that mean for you i don't care if you're an online personal trainer and it's your living to look, feel, and be strong. Or if you're not, it doesn't matter. You'll always do better in life if you feel better, if you look better, if you're stronger, if you're, if you're more mentally alert. Guaranteed, slam dunk. And you'll be there more eating at home than you will going out. Also, going out is super expensive. <laughs> okay? You'll spend a lot of money that you don't have to spend. Yeah. Now, this does take a little bit of a shift if you eat out a lot and you spend a lot of money that way that takes a little bit of a shift in lifestyle habits. Ah. That is true. Lifestyle habits. You have to get into the habit of the food preparation at home. Now I know there are a number of you right here that are uh, fitness trainers and you're like, yeah, food prep, duh. Yeah. I know, right? But there are some of you that don't know these things. So just uh, gonna go with it. It does take a little bit of a shift in habit, but trust me, it's worth it. You'll save money, you'll, main, you'll improve your health, which then will allow you to make more money on an ancillary basis across the board. Okay. And then once in a while you go out, you blow out big, you have a good time. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Like right? one, once a month and then it's really special. Like, Oh, it's this one yeah. dinner this month. Or if you're right. like celebrating like a big accomplishment and you're ready to go again or something like that, um, share right. it with friends and family. Yeah. But if it becomes a habit, it can really rack up quick. And not only that, but the calories are really high. So it's like, okay. Yeah, because you look, yeah. the, the restaurant and the chef is trying to make food that you like, that you enjoy, that tastes good. Yes. And trust me, he or she is going to put all kinds of stuff in there that you, if you knew it was in there, you'd be like, whoa. Fats and carbs. <laughs> lots of fats. Fats, lots carbs, carbs, salt, sugars. Yeah, and that's yeah. because they want it to taste good. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that, okay? There's a reason for that. So uh, that's another big one is, is going, uh, you know, spending money. In that kind of a manner, keep in mind um, that attaining, attaining and maintaining a massive amount of wealth is totally possible 
in America, in Western countries. But there's reasons, there's all these reasons that most people don't do it. I mean, middle class, sure, that, that's, a, that's much more easily attainable, but I'm talking 10 million plus. And the reason is because of all these, the temptations, because of what Greg said earlier, that everybody else is doing it, because it's lack of forethought, lack of planning, you know, to spend more of your time eating at home does take more planning. It does take, and it, up front especially, if you it's can. like a flywheel. You got to, you push it, push the flywheel. It takes a lot of effort up front, but then once the flywheel is going, then it doesn't take nearly as much effort to maintain the motion of the flywheel. Okay. I've, I've got two tips for eating at home. Number one, if you have a great significant other, have her cook the food that can help save you time. I know Brandon um, does make a really good argument that if it takes you a long time to cook and you're a high income earning person, sure, it definitely don't be cooking. But if you can have your significant other save you some time, that's great. Another thing is, I don't know if there's any targets nearby you, but it's actually free for them to do all the shopping for you. You, you can do the target app and you just do the order. And then they do all the work for you. It's completely free. They gather up all your groceries. You pull into the driveway and they set them right in your car, completely free. And so that's wow. nice because that saves, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of grocery shopping. Yeah, it you does. Can, you can get it. So we later. also use, uh, like before we start this eating plan, which is only six weeks, so we have to stay strict to that. But speaking of Brandon's uh, concepts, and those are great, we'll use the places like Target or the higher end supermarkets that do a lot of the, the pr food prep uh, for, you know, they, they cook the stuff mm -hmm. or they partially cook the stuff. And because it's the higher end, I know the ingredients in there are, are higher quality than restaurants. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll do that a lot. That'll save a lot of time too, but you got to get yourself to that level. Okay. My wife and I, we, we help each other uh, do the cooking. Like I said, we prep a lot of stuff and you can get used to it. It's not, it's not rocket science on that front. Okay. It's not, but it's really important. I'll bet you if you asked Jeff Bezos, if you had him in front of you, you know, one of the richest guys in the world, um, but he really cares a lot about his health and his wellness. He puts a lot of time into this. And I, I, I would say with a 98% probability that he would say he doesn't go out to eat all that often. Um, of course, he's got a, a chef at home. Uh, I guarantee that. But I'm sure it's super high quality food, really good for you. Oh, yeah. And he's eating, I'm sure he's eating at home a lot more than you would ever think. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm sure of it because he knows he wants to keep, he's not really at Amazon anymore, but he wants to keep doing different business things. He wants to stay sharp, stay clear, stay strong because he wants to keep doing things for the next several decades. Now, Warren Buffett is kind of an, a freak. The guy has uh, Dairy Queen burgers every yeah, day, candy bars and Coca-Colas. <laughs> and he's 92 years old. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh okay? my gosh. My grandfather was the same stupid way. The guy could eat and did eat all the dumb things and it didn't matter. <laughs> like, uh, some people just don't don't take your ch yeah. the chance that that's you. Yeah, <laughs> Warren Buffett's gonna like croak one day, and they're just gonna find of course he a is. ton of McDonald's in his gut. Like, oh, it's yeah, gonna... it's crazy. I mean, all the nonsense he eats, and oh. still ninety two years old. But that's him. Okay, that's not most of us. Not like by far, sense. just don't don't roll the dice that that's you. I can tell you again. In my fifties, uh, I've been living well, eating well, paying attention to these things for. Uh, 30 years and I don't feel like I missed out like so many of my friends going out to eat more often and drinking more often and do I don't all I feel is great every day yeah how do you feel each that's and every what I day? feel yeah that's how I feel I feel strong alert energized uh, life affirming I feel this every single day of my of my life and it's because I spent 30 years I didn't just wake up last year and say oh my god I'm in my 50s and oh, I gotta no <laughs> Um, it's not too late, right? Too late at that point. So um, these are different ideas that you uh, that you want to keep in mind. Another thing I tell people in the, for the, the Centurions and the Legion, this is in the one of the courses, one of the early beginner courses that uh, Greg and I give you, is paying attention to where your money goes. I mean, most people just don't know, especially in the in the digital money age of the credit cards and, and the online spending. It's easy just to spend the money and not not know where your money is and not know what you have. I'm not suggesting you stare at your bank statement all day, every day, but check it once a week and understand where your money is going and be able to tell, you know, write it down or, or, or repeat it. Yeah, this is in the past couple of weeks. This is generally where I've been with my money. This is where I am right now. Take this is where I'm going. Shots. Get a budget too. Okay. Get yourself a budget. Uh, write it, sit down with, with uh, your significant other 
and understand where your money is going. Right? They say that a lot of people are spending too much money on the streaming services, Netflix, Disney, Hulu, Paramount, CBS, uh, Peacock. You, you add it on and on and on, right? And just because the cable is no longer part of your life, you're probably spending the same, if not more, yeah. on the various streaming services and how much you're really using them. I mean, it's just a small example. Or people going to Starbucks every day, and that, that's crazy to me. Oh, I know. Right? That can add up. Crazy. <laughs> like, people who go to Starbucks every single day are only people that should be, that are worth $10 million or more. If you're not, then you shouldn't be going to Starbucks every day. Okay? It's nuts. I mean, $7, $8 every time you go in the place Starbucks, for one cup of coffee. Starbucks knows like the lifetime value of each customer for one year is about $3,000. Just the average yeah, it's person. It's nuts. <laughs> and then, All right? It's Absolutely nuts to pe for people yeah. to spend that kind of money on those kinds of things. So um, there are just some things, again, to summarize here that you want to spend money on uh, if it helps you make money. Or yeah. if it just brings so much pleasure and joy uh, to your family, you know, kids or to you or your spouse, then you spend the money. Yeah. Or uh, if it otherwise, saves you a lot of time. Don't. If you're spending money to save time so that you can make more money, right? It all comes yeah. back to making money. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So especially if you're younger, um, when, you, when you should be putting in those longer hours, um, you know, you should be doing 50, 60. I was doing 90 a week. Uh, when I was Greg's age, back in those days, uh, when you need to be putting this kind of hours to build the expertise and build your, your financial foundation, your base, um, then you really need to be paying attention to those kind of things. For me, I don't work that kind of hours. I don't work more than 40 hours a week ever. Okay, Never work more than 40 hours a week. A That's lot of reasons for that. I don't want to, don't have to. Plus, I'm better if I do other things. Yeah. Okay. You save up your mental I do other things Because you're, you're making big decisions for the Legion. You've got a lot of different projects going. You kind of need that that time to really think and digest and and you know take your time with these decisions because they're so important. If you're working all the yep. time, you might rush through some of these decisions and the the output may not be as good of a quality as it could be. So the, the whole bottom line, you want to have money to invest. And mm. obviously uh, trading trading and, and investing in the stock markets, futures markets, come on. You know, we show uh, everybody every day that uh, you can do that. You want to do real estate like if you get a deal. You can't just yeah. do it to do it. You know, you can't be the, the thinking you're going to be on TV, like a uh, flip and flop or whatever, that that's going to work for you. You got to find the opportunity. Yeah. You got to know what you're doing. You have to know the business, know the industry. Or if you're going to spend money on a car, make sure that it's something that you can make money from. If you're going to spend money on clothes and your appearance, again, make sure that when you, if you spend more than, uh, you know, a, a nominal amount, uh, or a reasonable amount, it's because it's something that you can make money from, okay? Yeah. Or if you're spending money, uh, another example, this coming winter, uh, we're spending it in uh, Puerto Rico um, for two months, maybe maybe more. And obviously that's that's not going to be a, a, a low cost type of a thing, but I don't ever want to be in cold weather again. Plus, <laughs> we're going to be uh, helping out with uh, sea turtle preservation. That's our, our focus for the trip. Oh, that'll and be it, fun. You know, I can work down there without any missing a beat because of the industry that we're in. Yep. But that's going to be our non-work time is going to be sea turtle preservation for the uh, the winter in Puerto Rico. That's awesome. So because that's what I want. It, it's what we we love. We're passionate about these kinds of things. So we have the money because we've done all these other things already. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We've already done these things that we talked about. So, all right, cool. Uh, Greg, anything else from your? Uh, Neck yeah. of the Minnesota woods. Yeah, just a, a few closing thoughts. If you don't have a lot of money, invest in your skills so that you can make money. Get a good job. Try to get a raise in that job. Switch jobs if you can, if, you, if you're not making enough at your current job. Then once you start to stockpile your cash, you've got to think of ways of how you can reinvest into yourself so that you can make more money. Then once you have a decent amount of cash, you can start trading and investing. That's where you can really start to multiply your money. Don't try to multiply your money from $100. Try to multiply your money from a few thousand, if not more. But we do that by, by first building our skills, okay? What's yep. cool about the stock market too, though, is you can start learning even if you have little to no money. Does that make sense? So you can start learning, you can paper trade, you can um, take our courses if you join the Legion. So you can start learning when the risk is really low and that way you become a really good trader and investor with very little risk. And then as you grow your account, you're getting better at the same time. 
and then you can start making really big gains when your account is big and you're the best trader you've ever been at that point in time. Does that make sense? It does to me. Sweet. So here's a question. Is 100000 a year, I'm sure that what you're talking about is, uh, is income from a job, yeah. enough to start focusing on multiplying money? Yeah. If, if you don't have a, a high net worth in 10 years after making 100000 a year, then you've made all the mistakes that we just talked about. 100000 a year is more than enough. Okay, It's more than enough. That's another myth that, that society foists on people is I need to make... 500,000 or a million a year before I can really start growing my wealth. No, 100,000 is more than enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. that's, uh, yeah. I, I would say, uh, like, yeah, Rob, any full time job is enough. You just want to keep putting a portion of your paycheck into your stock trading account or investing account. And then right. as you boost your income, you're just putting a bigger portion into your investing account. And then before you know it, it, it you've automatically saved and not only saved, but you've been investing. So, your wealth can start to snowball. The biggest mistake yep. is not consistently adding to your trading account. The money will just find a, another place to, to live. Sure, it'll go. Okay. It'll, it definitely will, will wander off the reservation and you'll, you'll be without it uh, for sure. So here's another example, something that just popped up in my mind. Yeah. Uh, computer equipment, laptops, phone, all these things are very inexpensive these days. But I just spent $3,000 on a uh, new computer. Nice. And you're probably, thinking, you're probably thinking, how could you even do that? Like, how could you possibly spend that much money on a computer in been. 2023, right? Because it's what I make a living from. Yeah. It's what I, it makes me money. I, I spend 3000 and in a year, that thing will, just that thing alone will make me hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm going to spend money on something that's going to help me make money. No doubt about it. Okay. But a fancy Apple phone? I no, I don't care about that. I don't. I use the phone to text and a couple of phone calls. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just I don't really need a phone. I don't use it for work. Okay, I use I use my desktop because it's better for me to do my trading and uh, and research and writing here. But I'm, I'll I'll spend the money on a on a computer because it helps me make money, right? Something that doesn't. You got to think. Okay, does it really bring me the the joy? And just think about it. What I what I stress is think. Stop and think. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main messages here. Stop and think. All right, any other uh, questions today? Otherwise, we're going to be splitting it here soon. It's time to go yeah. and enjoy um, yeah. some time with this pretty dog of mine and um, another cool summer night. Yeah, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. So, hey, Greg, do me a favor. Post up. We've got a um, uh, money um, master course next Thursday. Okay. We have a webinar next Thursday, July 20th, oh, 7 p.m. Uh, okay. For those, if you are already a Centurion, then this is not for you. You already know this stuff. But if you are not in uh, the Victory Unit Legion, if you are not a Centurion with us, then you want to come and join us next Thursday, July 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we will uh, talk more about, we get more into investing and trading uh, at those events than we do it uh, at this kind of a gathering. Uh, there we go. So click on that link, sign up. I know we already have a lot of people signing up more than uh, more than usual, it seems. Uh, so you want to get your seat there because there's the, there's a limit to it. There's a limit to it because we can only address so many questions. We can only interact with so many people. All right. Even if you know with with me and Brandon and Greg doing the event. So come on, join us for that again Thursday, July twentieth, seven p.m. All right, I'm going to skip out of here. Thanks for uh, coming, everybody, and all the new Centurions. Again, welcome. Congratulations. And I see a couple of names that have been with me for, uh, for years. And as always, I uh, love and uh, am grateful for your support. So we'll see you guys soon. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Peace, you guys. Invest in yourself.